Okay, I'm gonna assume this has started. Um, this is Lee Solden. This is live at World Languages Facebook, Facebook page. Uh, the title of this lecture is Learn Dutch. And I'm attempting to teach people Dutch specifically uh, through a video that my friend slash Depover made, which just before I went on live here, of course, actually it's been the first time I tried it, it didn't work. So, okay, so it's 20 minutes ago, about 25 minutes ago, it is now 5.20 p.m. Uh, U.S. Eastern Time, about 25 minutes ago, I posted the link along and, and to that link, I made several comments posting a lot of information, okay? And that information and the link itself is enough to get you a good start on learning Dutch. And not just, not probably just academically, I mean, you can understand in a, just a, a week from now, you can understand what this guy is saying, okay? When he's speaking. And uh, so the first step in that is to listen to the guy a lot, okay? So, hey, why you listen to me even? If you have a computer where you can play two things at once, click on that link, start listening to his Dutch, and turn it down a little bit if you, if you want to listen to me. It's more important that you be listening to him and, and looping that Dutch, because that's all I'm going to tell you to do. <laughs> now, you don't have to pay any attention to it. Like, you can be listening to me going on about how to, how to learn Dutch. Same time, you can actually be doing the learning by beginning the first bit of the process, which is having that Dutch going into your ear. This is for your speech center. Your speech center is a supercomputer that you're born with, keeps getting stronger and stronger as you grow older. So use it, okay? First thing you want to do is to get to where this guy's speech sounds crystal clear to you. Well, right now you listen to him, it's probably not crystal clear, especially if you don't know any, any German or any other associated language to, to Dutch, okay? So again, this is Lee Solden at uh, 5.24 p.m. now, Eastern U.S. time, live on World Languages Facebook page, and I'm trying to teach you Dutch, okay? So first thing I want you to do is start playing that guy's audiobook, okay? So you play it like three hours a day while you're watching TV. You, you can watch your favorite program. It doesn't have to be in Dutch. Just whatever you want to watch, you know, whatever you like. Watch Netflix, uh, listen to radio, whatever. Ha uh, listen to music, your favorite music, okay? But have the Dutch playing softly in the background. This is passive listening. Should not take any of your time. Just just something there. It's like if you have the TV on all day and not paying any attention to it, kind of the same thing, except you got Dutch playing in the background. So playing Dutch in the background, first step. Now, again, every everything that you need to get started learning Dutch is in front of you today on this page. You got the video. Okay, that's what you want to learn. You want to learn what this guy's saying. Number two, you got the ear tuning syllables. That's the second step. And uh, the ear tuning syllables are attached to the post with the video that I made about approximately uh, 4.50 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. So look at those ear tuning syllables. All the instructions for doing the ear tuning is right there. So I tell people generally listen for 21 hours, right, to passively. Let's say that one week of three hours per day, and you're ready for the ear tuning syllables. Do you have to wait? No. It's just this is more time efficient because it could take a little longer if you start your passive listening today and start the ear tuning today. Eh, it'll still work. Just I just like to be do things efficiently. So I tell you, hey, it takes no time at all to listen to this for 21 hours. Let your ear get used to it a little bit. But if you want, if it's the first time you've heard about this system of mine, then hey, more, no problem with starting the video today. Go to the ear tuning instructions and follow them. Okay. 
Now, after you file the ear tuning instructions for a few days, it's about one hour per day of actual, that's your, you got to take one hour of your time per day here, right? If you don't have an hour, well, what if you only got 10 minutes a day to learn Dutch? Well, then, okay, do the three hours of passive listening, which should not take any time, and just do 10 minutes of ear tuning a day for now, okay? It'll take you a little longer to tune into the Dutch that way, but it'll still tune in um, in a reasonable amount of time, say, you know, a week from now instead of three days from now. Some Somebody has been listening to Dutch for uh, 21 hours over the last week, uh, usually in two hours worth of their time doing the ear tuning exercises, the Dutch starts sounding clear to them. Now, mind you, clear is not perfect. Uh, and I tell people, you, you don't stop doing the ear tuning exercises. Uh, first week, I want you to do an hour a day, if you can. And then from there, slack off a bit, half hour a day and for another week, and then 15 minutes a day, and then 10 minutes a day, and then maybe 10 minutes a day, four times a week. And about a year from now, you're doing maybe five minutes twice a week. But you never stop doing them because your goal is not to hear Dutch well, is to hear it with a native ear. You always go toward a native ear, okay? So that's the second step. Third step, how do you actually learn the words? There is no study involved. Instead, you just look over my notes, and again, those notes are attached to the video. Look below. There, uh, you, if you look, uh, it's like, it's like uh, I did a comment and a comment to a comment, okay? So anyway, you look through there, you will find the transcription. And the, there's a couple of comments of transcriptions. Basically, the first two minutes or so of the video are word by word. I'm telling you what is there. And I, I noticed a typo. Uh, yelly, guys, yell, yelly means... You all, I mean, other words, you plural, okay? And I put down yelly equals yelly. Well, that doesn't do any good. <laughs> one one spot in, that, in there. So yelly equals you all. Other than that, it looked like I got everything right, okay? Um, so, okay, so how do you go about learning the Dutch? You look over my notes for a sentence, like for, the, like for one sentence. So you kind of know what that first sentence means. And then you listen to that sentence on the video that slash duck over made the one i have the one i have posted there so then what well if you need to look over the notes again see what this you know word by word and get an idea what the whole sentence means it's kind of obvious i can go over it but i don't think you, i for for most people it's pretty obvious i might go over it anyway here so after uh looking over those notes then you want to read as he's speaking. Well, there you got to go to a, one of the other other posts because I have the I have the words themselves without any definitions. Okay, so that's where you're going to want to read the read the Dutch. Now you can read it either with or without. Got two versions. The first version. I've left the few times where he's used uh, West Flanders, and the only time he, the only time he used West Flanders is a, a few cases where he contracts two words into one. Okay, and uh, so the first version you see is that version, and the second version is one without that bit of West Flanders in it. So it's you know pure Dutch per se in the in the second. I don't care which which one you read, but if you read the first one, it's going to sound more like him <laughs> a little bit by a few words big deal also that transcript because i use it to uh, uh to go into other languages in google um i've changed a few of his words uh, especially dot dot means that uh he he tends to leave off his t most of the times so he says dot okay so it says saying that for that that for the that for dot 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 dot, dot for that <laughs> i'm purposely slurring these so show you that it's pretty much the same word in both languages dutch doesn't have a d so they use a, uh they don't have a th so they use a d for that dot okay and the i 
is said like a European a ah, so it's da instead of that. Okay, but he says da most of the time. Now in my transcript, you see I got dot written every time. That's because I use that transcript to uh, translate it into other languages. I'm trying to make this more um, applicable to, to more people. I'm trying to do my translations consistently in, in several languages, five to be exact, uh, French, Spanish, German, Italian, and Portuguese. I, I speak, I'm learning Brazilian, Portuguese. So at least I'm translating the, the things into those languages. Um, if you look back on the site a bit, a couple of days, a couple of days back, I, I put the translations for the just the first sentence in those languages. Eventually, all translations of those five languages will be there, and they're specifically going to be attached as comments to the YouTube video. Okay, so it'll be very easy for anyone to see the translations in those five languages, and also. Eventually, I'm going to go do word by word translations for people who are Italian speakers or French speakers or Spanish speakers or Brazilian Portuguese speakers, or I should say, or Portuguese speakers. Because written wise, it doesn't make much difference whether you're, you know, doing the Brazilian version or the, the version in Portugal, not that much. It's going to keep you from learning Dutch by what I wrote. Okay. And what I missed, French, I mentioned French, German, Spanish, Brazilian, Portuguese, and Italian. So eventually, I'm going to have all the definitions, word by word, all the way through uh, what the seven-minute long video for those languages. And, of course, what, what's there right now, uh, very, very little, the, the translations are not there. If you go to the video, all you're going to see there is the... Uh, the transcription for the first bit of it, and the ear tuning syllables. So those ear tuning syllables, which are the most important thing for anyone starting, are right there posted with the video. Okay, even though I have instructions written down and attached to the uh, to the to the video, I will be going over that today. How to do read throughs, but okay, we're we're on. Uh, not read through, how to do ear tuning exercises, but more on read throughs. I got cut off last time I tried this, so I'm kind of start, starting from the beginning. So after you've started doing the passive listening, after you got a good ear for Dutch, then you start doing read throughs. And this, how, this is how that goes. You look at the definitions that I provided in the, uh, uh, Either, either later they'll be attached to the video, YouTube video. Right now, you can find them in comments attached to the video here where I have it linked, okay? And uh, so you look over the definitions in English for each word in, in Dutch, kind of get an idea of what that sentence means. And then you go to the other version of it, which is just the Dutch, or it doesn't matter. You you can try to you can use you can use the the version with the definition English definitions in it too. I don't I don't care. Or you can go and use the other version, which has the uh, the Dutch transcript for the first four minutes about of the seven minute long video, and one sentence at a time. You look over the notes what it means, and then you listen to it about three times while you're reading it that is targeted at your speech center you may not understand the dutch today but your speech center is picking it up and is going to put it in your permanent memory overnight tomorrow you go do do the same thing try try uh, do these read throughs where you're looking at the notes and then you're reading it while listening you're going to go like huh I actually understand it as it's being said and as, I, as I'm reading it more than the day before. Nothing's perfect the first day. And the next day, the next day, next day, you keep doing this. And it's, it's a function of the speech center. What you keep trying to do, what you keep, keep trying to understand, 
your speech center overnight keeps doing paradigms for you. And after a while, you understand exactly what this guy's saying when you're hearing it. Well, there's a second step to the read-throughs. Well, the third step, I should say, because the first step is to look over the notes. The second step is to listen three times while you're reading. Then there's a third step, very important. You listen three times with your eyes closed to see how well you understand it. Because the, the bottom line is I'm, this, I'm trying to train you to understand what this guy's saying the whole seven minutes when you close your eyes and just listen to them, okay? Not reading. That's what's important. And eventually, hopefully, there'll be a second video, third, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we're starting this, this uh, everybody, this one seven minute video, okay? So if you're more advanced, like you already know German and you think this is all pretty easy, hey, you know, you don't have to do one sentence at a time. Maybe you want to do the whole four minutes. Look, look, through, look through the notes for the whole four minutes. Do the whole four minutes. In which case, you would look over the notes for the whole four minutes. And then you would read it a few times while listening. Then close your eyes and just listen three times to the whole thing. So it's just going to depend on your level. If you're a raw beginner, never had any exposure to a Germanic language, other well, English is a Germanic language, but something a little closer, like, like Dutch, uh, or like German or Swedish, maybe. I'm not sure. I think Swedish is a little closer to, to Dutch. I don't know. I don't know Swedish, okay? But uh, I, my understanding is it's pretty close, but I don't know. I haven't actually learned it. Anyway, um, so... Also, as you've done, if you've done this a few times, you, you just started today, but it's like a week from now, two weeks from now, you feel like you pretty much know it and you're just reviewing it. Again, you can just do the whole four minutes. You don't, do, don't do one sentence at a time. Of course, by then, a few weeks from now, I'll have the whole seven minutes. Uh, so you can do the whole seven minutes all at once if you'd like. Okay. And by then, hopefully, we got a second video up too. And uh, let me see here. Okay, so instead of studying, you're, you're depending on your speech center. Now, how does that work? Why do I do this? Uh, well, first of all, I came up with all this stuff that I'm telling you prior to ever knowing anything about this thing called natural language acquisition. I I, I learned slash stumbled upon all this stuff. I wasn't, you know, I'm not, not some kind of scholar. I was trying to figure out the best way to learn language or anything. I was, you know been interested in 12 different languages over my life. And uh, I usually, most of my life, I study one at a time. Starting in May of 2018, I started studying two at the same time. Well, one very heavily, French and Arabic, a little bit of Arabic at the time. But I never went back to only studying one language at a time. I studied like three, maybe a lot. Um, as recently as... Uh, See, October of 2019, you'd find me spending 90% of my time studying Russian, for instance, and the other 10% of my time, a little this, a little that, okay? Three months, like four months before that, you'd find me only studying uh, Hindi and Arabic, nothing else. Well, not nothing, I mean, 90% of my time, maybe 85% of my time. The other 15%, would be on various other languages that I'm interested in, okay? So, and starting November 1 of 2019, I started studying all 12 at the same time. I'm not saying it's the greatest idea, but I started doing that, and I stuck with it for about six months, and got away from it for the last few months, really, for the most part. Um, uh, however, I'm back to it, uh, the, but... I'm not I'm not really in a pattern where I'm studying all 12 equally right now. I've I've uh, instead I'm kind of like trying to concentrate on one at a time, but I'm only talking about for like a couple of weeks and then I but I'm always listening and, and trying to keep the other ones fresh and then I then I switch to another one heavily for a couple of weeks, et cetera, you know. Different pattern than I was doing for about six months uh from ending May of this year, uh, starting November 1 of last year. Um, 
so anyway, I'm getting off getting off track here. <laughs> okay. So back to the subject at the hand. How do you learn Dutch from what's right in front of you? Number one, start listening to it. Play it passively. Ignore it. Don't let the passive listening take any of your time, but you want it in your ear. Just like a child is born into the Netherlands, they're going to have Dutch in their ear all the time, okay? Second thing, if you if you live in the Netherlands, you're going to hear your mother or somebody come up to you and say some phrases such as, here's your bottle, here's your bottle, here's your bottle, here's your bottle, here's your bottle. Daddy's home, daddy's home, daddy's home, daddy's home, daddy's home, daddy's home, daddy's home. What a cute baby, what a cute baby, what a cute baby, what a cute baby. And you're going to hear these phrases day after day, over and over and over again. And guess what? Your ear, between the fact that your your speech center is constantly hearing this Dutch all around and hearing these same repeated phrases over and over and over again, is going to lock on to the the sounds coming out of Dutch mouths. Well, that's all it is, is sounds, a bunch of noise. It's going to translate it into speech clear syllables okay now the child's hearing clear syllables child may not know any words yet but child's hearing clear syllables now what well, well slow down a minute how does the hearing clear syllables tie into my my system well the second step of my system is i have you listen to the same 30 seconds of speech in Dutch, 120 times a day. And a little more to it than that, I, I have you follow my ear tuning syllables half the time. Half the time, you just listen carefully, okay? And I tell people who are, you know, uh, visually impaired, you do more toward the, well, if, if, if more or, or totally toward the listening carefully. If you, if, with that, in that case, I give you, uh, audio cues if you need them rather than my ear tuning syllables my ear tuning syllables are for people who can see if you can't see right, hey you got to use it something different which is audio cues so i'll tell i'll point out something in the ear tuning syllables say hey okay listen for this one sound okay you hear that okay listen for the next sound after that and eventually i'll build a road map by audio like by talking a person through it and they eventually they're going to know exactly where those ear tuning syllables are uh, remember you, you're doing this 120 times a day listening to these things so anyway and you keep doing that for quite a while uh, a whole lot the first week less and less and less and less, and less after that so you, whether you can see or not you're going to get very familiar with the ear tuning syllables and your ear because you're hearing these repeated 30 seconds which is equivalent to the child hearing, hearing the constant stuff over and over again. If you take all the things the child hears over and over and over again, is it much more than 30 seconds worth? Maybe not, okay? But all you need to tune into a language is that 30 seconds. Now, can you do better by another 30 seconds? Well, yeah, eventually, I'm, if you're going to stick with learning Dutch, you're going to you're going to be I'm going to give you ear tuning syllables for other voices, uh, other accents. So you get you even get a better ear. OK, um, as a matter of fact, anyone contacting me on Facebook, Lee Solden, um, I'm going to have you not just learn this video, but I'm also going to have to have you learn uh, uh, another audio book, some fairy tales that you commonly found on YouTube. Okay, so I'll give you kind of go down two paths and I'll have you ear tune into one accent, which is this, this West Flanders, somewhat West Flanderish, as well. The guy is from West Flanders, right? He's speaking Dutch, but he has, he's speaking with a bit of an accent. Okay, uh, and I'm going to also have you ear tune uh, maybe next month to uh, somebody who has a slightly different accent. Okay. And it'll be a lady's voice. And uh, then, you know, if you stick with me long enough, you'll get another set of ear tuning syllables, et cetera. So you know, your ear tuning never stops. And periodically you want to refresh your ear tuning syllables, but you never stop using that first set. No matter how well 
you can follow that first set. You still use it. Because remember, you have this supercomputer up in your up in your brain called the, the speech center. And even though you think you're not getting any further information by from those ear tuning syllables and by listening carefully, you don't know because your 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 subconscious thinks 20 times faster. It's digging in even further and trying to trying to see exactly what this person's saying. Okay. Um, and while I'm saying that, if you have a native ear for Dutch, you're hearing it perfectly. Um, it is just a fact of life that if you hear something perfectly long enough, you're probably going to start speaking it right. It doesn't, you don't necessarily have to practice. A lot of kids start talking. First time they start talking is when they start talking a lot and they don't talk, they don't muddle. They say, say everything clearly because they've been listening and listening and listening. Their ear is tuned to their native language. And when they start talking, they talk up a storm and it's all just right. They never practice, they never practice. And other kids mumble first, right? Some kids don't, okay. So it just shows to prove there, because there's a percentage of kids that do not go through the mumbling and just start go, speaking perfectly, that talking is not necessarily needed to talk, to learn how to talk correctly. Now, as far as as far as talking, my program, nowhere in my program do I tell you uh, that my three-step program, there's more, there's a fourth step, which is not my step, uh, where I do tell you to talk, but my three steps, the three steps being a lot of passive listening, and then ear tuning exercises, and then read-throughs. And all of that, there's no talking, ask for. But I do tell you this, when you feel like talking, when you feel like speaking the language, absolutely do so. When you want to, and every child, after hearing enough of a language spoken, you can't stop them. And they're going to talk, and they're going to talk and talk and talk. because they, they, It's like, you know, language in, it's like, Okay, lang the head is full of the language, it starts spilling out, right? And adults in the same way. If they hear this language enough, they're going to want to start speaking it, and I encourage that to happen. Now, let's talk about the fourth part, the fourth thing I have a person do. I have them go to another type of natural language acquisition that I saw. Uh, this guy's teaching Russian. It's on YouTube. Uh, you can look it up yourself. It's uh, by the, the terms learn Russian storytelling method. 